Today, as modern science seeks to understand the miracle of creation, it sees an infinite universe, cold and dark, inconceivably vast, without beginning, without end. Across this cosmic void, trillions of island universes move. In one of these, the Milky Way, our sun is but a tiny star among 300 billion other stars or suns. Scientists now estimate that 30 billion of these suns have captive planets. Since the laws of creation appear to be universal, it is almost certain that many of these planets harbor life life in the dawn of evolution, life in the twilight of existence, life where intelligence may have developed far beyond the stage of man. As an example of how the wonders of life may be evolving with infinite variation on other planets throughout the universe, let us follow the story of our own Earth from its misty beginnings. In the blackness of space, the faint pressure of starlight gradually compresses billions of tiny particles into a tremendous cloud of dust and gas. For millions of years, this cloud contracts with the growing pull of gravity until in the hot, glowing center, the sun is born. Swept into a flattened disk, whirlpools of heavy elements form the planets to circle in permanent orbits around the sun. The Earth begins to cool and shrink, its molten crust pouring out dense clouds of steam and carbon dioxide. In these primeval vapors, the stage of life is set. Steam condenses to rain. For centuries, great torrents of water tear at the rocky face of the Earth, creating the vast oceans. For centuries, rich salts and minerals are washed from the land and carried down to the sea. A billion years have passed. Now the warm primordial sea is the cradle of life. Here are gathered all the elements of nature from which life will emerge. One of these elements, found throughout the universe, is carbon, first link in the chain of living things. The carbon atom is unique, for it alone combines with itself and other elements in millions of intricate structures to form the complex molecules of organic compounds. In the slow course of time, some are transformed into proteins, the foundation of all life. These microscopic particles join with other elements to produce millions of delicate combinations. Most are destroyed but a few of the strongest survive. Now, with time as the main ingredient, evolution of life is inevitable. Eventually, from the complex forces of nature, emerges the first organism, the first living cell, a microscopic speck of jelly able to grow and reproduce with great speed. As the eternal process of change continues, some cells group together in colonies, and from these evolve blue-green algae, the first primitive plants. In shallow pools, the chlorophyll of these plants converts the energy of sunlight into living tissue. For the first time, great quantities of precious oxygen are released, making possible ever higher forms of life. Ages roll by. The first minute cells of animal life appear, dependent on oxygen from the plants to survive. In the millions of centuries that follow, an infinite variety of plant and animal life begins to unfold. Endless adaptation, constant change, infinite variation through inconceivable lengths of time. At last, from the maternal sea, life emerges ready to challenge the hostile forces of a new environment. The pageant of living things spreads across the face of the land.
emerging during the last few seconds in the hour of time is man. Nature has created in man its most complex mechanism. The chemical processes that keep man alive are dependent on a never-ending supply of oxygen and constant body temperature. He automatically maintains an internal temperature of 98.6 degrees. But if prolonged exposure to severe heat or cold upsets his delicate balance by just a few degrees, man dies. Yet, given proper protection, man can carry on his everyday life within a temperature range of about 100 degrees. Nearly all plant and animal life as we know it exists within this same temperature span. There are some exceptions, however. Certain simple organisms, such as lichen, algae, and bacteria, can withstand more severe heat and cold. Broad as life's temperature range seems to us, it is nothing compared to the bitter cold and intense heat that mark the extremes of our solar system. At one end, the sun blazes at 10,000 degrees. Its radiant heat dissipates rapidly until after a billion miles we find the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, at temperatures of more than 300 degrees below zero. Here on Pluto, the distant sun glows but faintly over silent landscapes of frozen gases and lakes of liquid ammonia. Here, an Earth man would succumb in 15 seconds from the complete lack of oxygen, his body being solid in a few minutes. Moving nearer to the sun, we find Saturn. In spite of its majestic beauty, the poisonous atmosphere of ammonia and methane gas would be a death trap. Jupiter is closer to the sun, but is still intolerably cold at 200 degrees below freezing. Like Saturn, its air is poisonous. Again, man would quickly suffocate from lack of oxygen. His frail body torn by dense gases blowing in gales up to 400 miles an hour. These outer planets are far too cold and hostile for life as we know it. On the other hand, if man should visit Mercury, the planet closest to the sun, he would find it much too hot for life to exist. Mercury is a small and airless world with one burning face turned always to the sun. Man's blood would boil in this vacuum and his lifeless body would be incinerated in seconds. As we move away from the sun toward the earth, we enter the temperature zone favorable to life. In this golden zone are the orbits of Venus, Earth, and Mars. There may be life on Venus, but we know very little about our sister planet, for her mysteries lie shrouded beneath an impenetrable mantle of dense clouds. Beyond the Earth, at the outer fringe of life's temperature zone, is Mars, the third planet in our solar system where life could exist. Even though scientists think Martian conditions are severe, they believe that if man journeyed to Mars, he could survive here with moderate protection. He would need his own oxygen supply and some sort of protective covering. But life could be almost normal within pressurized houses, and pressurized cities. Today, as we face the serious problems of overpopulation and depletion of natural resources, the possibility of Mars becoming a new frontier is of increasing importance in our plans for the future.